Okay, so let's move on to I guess let's let's get into Watsonians. So how did you how did you get involved with Watsonians? I guess you've got a few there's a few family links with Scotland and things yep. that that might have brought you over. Yeah, so my brother, um, my my grandfather's Scottish, so we've got ancestry visa, and um, we'd also grown up, always grown up with a big Scottish connection, and was probably one of the countries that I always wanted to go to, you know, probably first on the list. Um, my brother went over a bit earlier, so probably early to mid two thousands, and he had played a little bit of um, rugby in New Zealand, so he went over and played was on contract, well he actually went over to Melrose and played yeah. played for Melrose in the 15 aside team there, I think as an overseas player, but maybe qualified because of his of our heritage. So he played a season there, I think yeah. if I get that right, one season at Melrose, and then he ended up being on the books at the borders for a couple of years before, you know, before they sort of spread or the or the structure of the Scottish stuff got split up. And yeah. during that time, he played sevens rugby for Scotland for a couple of seasons. So um, during that, so he lived at Melrose initially when he was playing for there and then moved up to Edinburgh. And he just had an amazing time in the country, loved the people and um, and just, yeah, everything about it just kind of appealed to me. So I was always quite keen if I was going to go over and play overseas, I wanted to go up to Scotland. Yeah. Um, I also had a couple of good friends, guys like Warren McSkimming, um, you know, guys like Tim McIntosh and, and other guys that had played in Scotland and really loved the way that the structure was set up. It was one day cricket, you know, you get there, you enjoy it, you're at good clubs, you're around good people. So I actually just touched base with Warren McSkimming and said, hey, do you know of any clubs that might be looking? He put me in touch, I think through Macca, maybe, actually. Yeah, he put, yeah. me, put me in touch with with Brooksy and I didn't have an agent and I just kind of kind of did it myself and, and dealt with Brooksy and um, it, that was an awesome experience like it gave me your yeah, real confidence to come over and kind of confidence that you know you're going to a good club around good people from dealing with Brooksy you kind of and you and you never quite know when you're going as an overseas player to a club but you kind of you know I was like 99% sure I was like okay well if the rest of the club or anything like the dealings I've had with Ross and also the feedback I've had from Warren around the people over there, I'll have a, I'll have a good time. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I came to Scotland. And then, obviously, I, I came back for a second year because it was just it was just awesome and around good people. And, yeah, you do have the options to go and play in Ireland or England and um, in Holland. But for me, I'd, I'd forge some really good friendships and. You know, there were a few things that were probably left after the first year that, you know, performance-wise that you kind of want to change or we always want to challenge yourself. So, yeah. Um, but it was probably more about the people. Yeah, good, good. Actually, you talk about performance. I've, uh, I've got, some, got some stats here. <laughs> Produced by Stuart Oliver, club stalwart. I've only got league stats, though. Um, so apparently you played 29 league games, 28 innings, five not outs, which is fantastic for the average, uh, 1,019 runs, 300s, highest score of 113 and an average of 44, 650s as well, 10 catches, and you bowled four overs, none for 24. Who was oh, that against? I don't know. I don't know. And that was, was that a league game? Apparently a league game, yeah. What were you bowling? Um, Le leg spin? Maybe seamers? <laughs> Probably everything. Yeah. Offies, leggies, seamers, what did I go for? None for 24 off four. That's decent. Yeah, it's modern day cricket. And over. Yeah. If I had to get yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, not, yeah, I mean, when you look at someone like a Pepsi, geez, he used to score a thousand a season. Yeah. So, yeah. no. Oh, yeah. it was you, okay, you, but. Yeah, I was going to say, was he? He was over at the same time because I remember you saying we played them in a cup game, and you said, "I bet he chops on. I bet he tries to cut it, and he chops on, and he did it second ball, and we yeah. all went mental." 
I remember that. Well, I think we would have gone mental because we didn't have to chase leather because he yeah. is he was some player, yeah. um, phenomenal player. He yeah, I oh, mate, this those stats are. I think yeah, I, I probably left after the two seasons. Probably the second season, I was a lot, probably a bit more disappointed with my performances. But I mean, stats are important. But I think, especially if you're an overseas pro, I think. One of the massive things is what what do you bring to the club? So one, you need to perform, but two, what are you developing for the culture at at your you know your top level, your twos, your threes, your fours, but also for the kids and the community. I think that's a really important part, and that's why I probably ended up coming to Watsons at the start. Uh, it was Watsonians at the start was from chatting to Brooksy was it was about. It was a long-term picture. It was actually like a genuine club. It wasn't just, hey, we want to win titles. With You know, it was clear that you wanted to win titles, but it wasn't just, you know, winning titles makes us a good club. It's like, no, this is about community. This is a link to the school. Um, you know, and that's kind of what I, what I enjoyed about it. And I always tried to, I suppose, yeah, respect Roxy and Brian Adair and... Um, Simon, you know, and Tim Bunker and people like that who put a huge amount of time into the club to build it up as a, as a genuine club. That's kind of what you always come back to or I always tried to come back to as a pro was to say, well, you know, that's one of the biggest things about this club that they want out of it. Performance and, and what happens at one's level is one thing, but there's a bigger piece to play. So, you know, stats yeah. are important. And, yeah, I suppose I was sort of okay with, with how I went, but... Um, yeah, I, I suppose I've tried to look back fondly on, you know, on what we did with some of those younger kids and yeah. and some of the people that just play the game for the love of it. Yeah, we had a good we had a good group then, and Brooksy was Brooksy was running the show, wasn't he? He was putting a lot of time and effort in, so it was. I remember it was a, it was a good time. Um, Absolutely. So I guess continuing on from that. Have you got maybe talk about any memorable moments from your time at Watsonians? Any any outstanding moments on the pitch, maybe off the pitch? Um, anything that uh, comes to mind? Well, that, that off the pitch and on the pitch. That's one thing I'd say is we, you know, when you when you play professionally, and I was lucky enough to do that in New Zealand. When you actually go to play overseas and play at club level, it, there's pressure to perform, but it's also so cool to just go back and play in an environment where you play with people who work all week and they come on a Tuesday and a Thursday and a Saturday and they just want to have a ball and they want to enjoy each other's company. And that's really refreshing because it can become a job when you mm. when you get paid to do it and your livelihood lives on, you know, whether you're successful or not performance-wise, it's actually really nice. So I had some amazing on and off field off field times. Some of the on field times, um, I remember, might have been my highest score was probably about sort of four or five weeks into my first season. And you want to do well, and you want to perform, and you want to kind of lead the team. And I don't think I'd done very well in the first three or four weeks. And I was lucky. I had Roxy saying, "Mate, you'll be okay." Um, but it's hard not to put pressure on yourself. I had Wrighty, you know, Craig Wright saying the same thing and was lucky enough to always felt supported by you guys and the team. But I think we chased down a total, maybe 250 or something like that at my side and, yeah, got 100 not out and it just felt, it was awesome to win and just kind of really enjoy it. But a big relief as well. But yeah. kind of like, okay, now let's get the season going. So that was that was um, uh, one memory. I also remember playing, I can't remember the name of the ground, Chubbs. Where did we play? It might have been a, a Sunday game out in Central and it, we played with this huge outfield, enormous ground. We'll have to, we'll have to dig it up. And um, Scottish we Cup had a, game, was it? Yeah, yeah, we had a really good one out there. Um, what else are some, some good memories? Like some, I remember we played at Carlton and it went down to the absolute wire. I think we won maybe on the last ball. Um, just a league game, but like those are the games we look back on and I don't even know whether I got runs or anything like that or mm. but that, just was, that wasn't seeing, the that wasn't the Craig Wright five for in the last five overs, was it? I remember I one. I think 
uh, it might have been, and I yeah. think we ended up getting a run out with about two overs to go as well, and yeah. just absolute scenes. Um, another really probably more bit more of a humorous on field. We went up to um, what's by what's by Inverness there by the by the airport. Inverness, Aberdeen, no. Sto Aberdeen, Aberdeen. Sto Stonywood Dice. Stonywood Dice. We went up to Stonywood yeah. Dice and we played there. It was on a Sunday and they batted first, got a reasonable total. We went out. I think I got skittled maybe first ball. Top of off, thanks for coming. A guy bowling about 115. And then it was the first day that our, um, I think the, the Indian guy that had come in, the Dingra, it's um, Dingra. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it was so cold and just I remember looking at him and he was just <laughs> thinking, What have I got myself into here? We're we're playing by the side of the uh the side of the airport. Those yeah. guns were going off to chase the birds away. Um yeah. freezing cold, big trip in the in the gig bus, you know, yeah. the bus all the way up, stopping for fish and chips on the way back, and yeah. just like the boys got a really good win tight win at the end but just those sorts of things are are awesome you know like you you play there's so many games that I look back on fondly both you know when you won and then at times when you lost but people did really well individually or or kind of grow grew and improved um so that's the on-field stuff and then plenty of off-field like I remember we had a dress up you know and that was a, another really cool thing about the club there was always people at the bar Tuesday, Thursday, just having a good catch up, you know, and not, it's not a club where there was, you know, a huge amount of drinking or anything like that, but it was just a really cool social connection right across the ones all the way down. People from the community would come in, um, you know, the rugby club, the hockey, yeah. you know, like that, that was a really cool part of it. And then I still remember we had a, we had a really good dress up party. Um, I can't remember. What was the, it might have been a, um, it must have been a letter. So you had to dress up as a letter and we had a great time. And I, I remember Ridey there having a ball and Willie Morton and, you know, yeah. um, just awesome people like that, you know, and, and, and obviously um, just meeting some awesome friends along the way, like Ali Fleming and yourself and Patty Sadler and, and guys that, you know, will be your friends for the rest of your life, you know, and it, there's a million, you know, catch-ups that I could think about that, but, you know, sit really fondly for me. Yeah, excellent. Well, the Venga bus that you were talking about is still going remarkably. Um, I did, we did have to push it out of a petrol station about two years ago from memory, but uh, it's still going. Charlie, the bus driver, shout out to Charlie. Charlie, um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>